A couple of questions regarding um, can women follow the janaza and watch the burial of their loved ones and can pregnant women go to the cemetery and also um, uh, going for hajj or umrah while the nifas or hajj, what, what are some resources about figuring out how to do that? Um, and I know you're, you have a book coming out in six months, inshallah. Inshallah. Um, so with regards to, just because we're, we, I don't, we're not giving a whole class, I won't give you all the different opinions and the reasonings why. I'll just give you the base answer. Yes, it is permissible to follow the geneza and to attend the burial pregnancy. Mensis, none of those have a, a weight on whether or not you do that. Um, that includes washing the body. You don't need to not be on your period to be, uh, do so. However, let me just say, you are going to see a difference of opinion sometimes from scholars. And I'm not going into all the details of that right now just because of this, this, the reality. But the point is that there are going to be some of the same exact texts are understood differently by different scholars and different medahib. So yes, there are going to be scholars who say that it is impermissible. And then there are other scholars who refute that and they provide their proofs on why it is permissible, amongst which the Prophet ﷺ passed a woman who was um, upset emotionally at the grave of her son. And she didn't realize it was the Prophet ﷺ and he reminded her to be patient and she spoke um, uh, disrespectfully, um, just in the moment of her grief, and the Prophet ﷺ didn't tell her, you're, you're not allowed to be here. Um, he's a legislator of law. He ha it is an, an incumbent upon him to make that clarification, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If someone is in the middle of doing something that's not that's not correct and he sees it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, Aisha radiallahu anha, she went and visited the grave of her brother, um, radiallahu anhu, and then a companion saw her and asked about specifically, aren't women not supposed to be going? And I'm just super summarizing this. Um, but she responded, she asked the Prophet in another narration, what should she say when she goes to visit the grave? The Prophet taught her what to say. So these are all evidences on women going, visiting the grave. There are a number of them from the Sahabiyat um, that exist, and that came after the initial prohibition and then the order to go, with the, uh, the recommendation to go. Other scholars who would disagree with this are going to look at those later narrations and give reasonings. Aisha radiallahu anha only visited her brother because he couldn't, she couldn't attend the janazah, for example. They're going to give their reasonings on why, no, actually, this is not meant for all women. This is a specific circumstance. Do you see where I'm coming with, like, how the, the, the scholars look at it differently? Sorry, I can't go into it more here, but the point is um, there is ample evidence to allow for it uh, to be done. With regards to the um, Mensis question, yes, so to go into Hajj or Umrah, you don't, um, the only part you absolutely need to be in will do in. You can get into your ihram on your period. You can do the other rites on your period, but you cannot make tawaf. However, if you're in Hajj or Umrah and you're only going to be there a few days and you don't live, you know, an hour or two hours away that you can just, you know, be in Ihram for a certain amount of, or excuse me, never mind, I won't say that part. Ignore what I just said. The point is, not everyone's group can just stay longer until a woman's period is done. That's just not realistic today. And so if you are not able to make Umrah without being pure from your period, then Ibn Taymiyyah and a number of other scholars mention that yes, you can make the tawaf on your period because you don't have another choice. There's a discussion on whether or not a woman needs to give a sacrifice for that. Ibn Taymiyyah's opinion is not, but there's other discussions on um, whether or not it should be done. So if you are going to go for Hajar Umrah, I would recommend reaching out to your Hajj or Umrah group, although now you can go on your own, so maybe that doesn't exist. I can't tell you a, um, a source that I know of in English. If you, anyone knows, please share it. That's why part of the book that, alhamdulillah, I finished writing the manuscript on has a whole section on this, just because I couldn't find it in English. Inshallah, I pray it'll be beneficial in a year, inshallah. Um, but if anyone has resources, please share. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair. Make dua that the book comes out and it's pleasing to Allah. A couple of, couple of points for the ladies. When there is a different opinion, what you need to do is you need to respect both. It doesn't matter which one you follow. And I say this to myself, number one, who, are, who I am to argue. Following, there is two things about janazah. There is following the janazah and then being in the graveyard side during the barrier. And then there is visiting the graveyard afterward. There's three things you have to separate. Now, it all depends upon the scholars who tells you you, you are allowed to, what you are going to be doing there. I don't know if you have been there. I have been there. It's one of the hardest things you'll see is when you put your loved one in a grave. If you don't think you can obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that moment, then don't go. 
if you can, and it's a reminder, this is actually why he allowed it at later on, Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. He said it. Kuntu nahitakum an ziyarat al-qubur fazuruha. I prevented you from visiting the graveyard. Now go, because it reminds you of the Akhir. So if the woman is going to go composed, dressed, pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I attended one, and I said to myself, now I know why some scholar says don't go. And I am a woman. So if you are going to go, pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dress code, actions, what are you doing? then yes, you can follow that opinion. If you cannot obey Allah in whatever the way it is, then don't go. Because you are starting something, others may follow you, and then you need to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you need to know there's two opinions, both are valid. As uh, Ustada Maryam said, the discussion is, is this is valid, this is valid. But you, as a person, when you are there, what are you gonna be doing? I, I attended one young woman. They were putting her in the grave and people were doing selfie. I attended. It's not I heard. I did see it. And then I said, now I know when some scholar says don't do it. Can I add something about the Hajj? No one has their period for the two, whole two weeks of Hajj. <laughs> like fiqhan, you, that it, you can't. And unfortunately, the most popular opinion out there is like, just take the pills. For you to take the pills where it regulates your period enough, you have to take them for three months, which means that before Ramadan, you started taking them. The overwhelming majority of women don't do that. And if you go and you miss one, and then you start spotting, and then people get confused, and now they're frustrated, and they're like, am I not praying? Am I not praying? Like, it just, it, it frustrates me because the way it's told is like, oh, just go take care of that. Go be less woman at Hajj. You don't have to be any less woman at Hajj. Like, it just, it's so, like, I didn't, thank you. I went, when I went, like, I was, I was in a really large group, and I'm telling the, the male scholars, I'm like, oh, so the women that are still on their periods, just send them to me. Because I was also still, just, I was still on my period. I was waiting till I was done, and then I took the group, we did our Umrah. And then if you get, like, there's, we're, Maryam and I are working on scenarios. Hopefully, so we, if we can have it published before next Hajj, that would be great, inshallah. But really, alhamdulillah, like there's, there's ways to talk about it. And there's ways to figure it out. And if in the extreme case that you got your period the morning of Eid, then you just missed the time of when the tawaf became mandatory. And you can't, you're not going to finish before you leave because you're bleeding more than seven days. Then, okay, now then you can take the exception. But for the overwhelming, it's like a statistical anomaly that that would actually happen. 